When I was in kindergarten, my teachers asked me a question I'm sure many of you have also been asked. The stereotypical, what do you want to be when you grow up? As a five-year-old, I said the first thing that came to mind. I want to be an astronaut. My name is Avery Davis, and for the past 18 years of my life, I've been fascinated by the stars. Growing up, I would lie outside on the grass for hours, getting lost in the sky above. As I connected dots of constellations with my fingers, I imagined the possibility that every star could be a sun, each harboring its own solar system, each with a unique possibility for life. My curiosity and wonder soon turned into an obsession. I committed every incessant fact about yellow dwarf stars like our sun to memory and poured endlessly over constellations. My favorite dwarf planet is Haumea. It has two moons, Namaka and Hiyaka. I could talk to you for hours about their origins and the two Hawaiian goddesses these moons were named after. See, I wasn't just obsessed with the science behind stars, but also the idea of stars. These flaming furnaces glittering in the night sky have never failed to unlock my inner dreamer. Close your eyes. Picture yourself lying down in cold, dewy grass and getting lost in the perpetual night sky above. You can all open your eyes now. Today, I hope to unlock your inner dreamer and remind you of the wonder and power of the stars. To do this, I'm here to talk about a quest, a quest to ignite a star, not in the sky, but here on Earth. This star could light the way towards solving one of the most pressing challenges of our generation, the climate crisis. A new large-scale sustainable form of energy is urgently needed to shift our planet away from fossil fuels. With continual population growth and technological expansion, especially with the introduction of AI, by the end of this century, energy demand will have tripled. As a civilization, we cannot just stop using energy. If we do this, we risk moving backwards. Yet the fossil fuels which have been relied on for the past 200 years can only be further used at the cost of greenhouse gases and pollution. There has never been a more pressing time in history than now for us to find a new large scale and sustainable form of energy. So how in the world can we find this holy grail of renewable power? The answer is as poetic as it sounds. It lies within the stars and it is called fusion energy. Fusion energy occurs within every star in our universe. It is what allows stars to light up the night sky and allows our sun to heat our earth. But how exactly does this work? Well, fusion energy is exactly what it sounds like. It is the energy produced by the fusion of two things. Within every star is a core. The core is the hottest and most dense region. This is where fusion occurs. It is where two hydrogen atoms are squeezed together under immense temperature and pressure. This forces them to fuse into helium. Since each hydrogen atom has one proton, when these two hydrogen atoms combine, they form an element with two protons. Guess what has two protons? Helium. It's as simple as one plus one equals two. Two hydrogens make a helium. Yet the real magic of fusion is not the reaction itself, but the immense amount of energy produced by the fusion of these two hydrogen atoms. Fusion releases 4 million times more energy than the burning of coal, oil, or gas. I'm going to say that again. Fusion releases 4 million times more energy than the burning of coal, oil, or gas. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in our universe. And the helium waste produced by fusion is an inert gas, meaning it can be safely released into the environment without harm. Further, fusion involves no chain reaction. This means that it cannot escalate out of control or explode. All of these conditions make fusion power reliable, safe, low carbon, and virtually unlimited. There is currently no other energy source like it. While wind and solar power are incredible, their main drawback is their reliance on uncontrollable environmental factors. If we want to fully shift our planet away from fossil fuels, we need an energy source like fusion, an energy source that can produce consistent power around the clock. So how can we harness this power from the stars here on Earth? The answer is so simple yet so complex. 
we need to bring a mini star down to Earth. By that, I mean we need to create a chamber of star-like conditions, super high heat and super high pressure. This is precisely what scientists all around the world are working to try to do. But I'm sure as you can all imagine, creating this star here on Earth is no easy task. We need to heat up hydrogen gas to unimaginably high temperatures, hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius. When we do this, hydrogen gas turns into the fourth state of matter, plasma. Plasma is found within lightning bolts and even fluorescent light bulbs. But for our purposes, we can think of plasma as super hot hydrogen soup. In order to contain this really hot hydrogen soup, scientists use a magnetic device called a tokamak. Quite a funny word, this tokamak essentially uses magnetic coils to bottle up the super hot plasma. This is really important because fusion only occurs when plasma is stable and contained. From there, the process is simple. The fusion reactions produce heat within the tokamak. This heats up a liquid which produces steam, and that steam drives a turbine that can create the electricity to power our grid. But we are nowhere near there yet. There are immense technological constraints to making fusion power a reality. If you've ever heard of fusion energy before, you may have heard the phrase that fusion is always 50 years away. I mean, scientists and physicists have been working on bringing fusion power to reality since the 1950s. What in the world is taking so long? Frankly, just hearing this, I understand people's doubts about the realities of fusion. While there is some truth in this, there have been some major recent breakthroughs in the field, and with rising investments, there is hope that now could be the turning point when fusion finally shoots off. For one, there have been several tokamak projects in construction all around the globe, such as the Joint European Taurus in the UK, the tokamak fusion test reactor at Princeton University, and the largest tokamak project in construction, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, quite a mouthful, ITER in France. In 2022, the US Lawrence Livermore National Lab made a major breakthrough in the field of fusion research. They created net energy gain for the first time. Then, in 2023, they did it again, harnessing even more energy. This was the turning point in the decades-long dream of achieving fusion power. It has given the world confidence that fusion is possible. Following this breakthrough, private sector investments have surged. In 2023, Microsoft announced a deal with a private U.S. fusion company called Helion to buy all their electricity created by fusion in 2028. In 2020, Bill Gates invested $1.8 billion in Commonwealth Fusion Systems, a private U.S. fusion company spin-out out of MIT. After I learned about fusion, I knew I wanted to get involved in this groundbreaking field. So I reached out to Commonwealth Fusion Systems, and through our email correspondence, I was offered an internship this past summer. My internship was incredible. I learned all about the science and technology behind fusion and tokamaks. But I also learned all the non-technological constraints that are holding fusion back from commercialization, a major one being negative public perception. When you hear the word nuclear, what do you think of? To many, you may be thinking the atomic bomb or the Chernobyl disaster come to mind. But what many people don't know is that fusion actually produces no long-lived radioactive waste. In fact, it has the same amount of radioactivity as found within exit signs, even the ones lining this very auditorium. So the concern that fusion poses significant radioactive harm is completely untrue. Yet, when people hear the word nuclear, they stop in their tracks. This has led to a huge rebranding effort in the fusion community to call this energy source fusion energy, as I've been saying, as opposed to nuclear fusion. Once fusion is commercialized, in order to fully integrate it into our society, we need to break this barrier of negative public perception. This starts first and foremost with education, particularly to children. Inspired by all I had learned while interning and eager to get involved in breaking this barrier, I wrote and published a fusion energy children's book called Fusion Nova to ignite fusion energy passion in youth. My story follows Stella, 
a young girl who travels through the universe with a blue gas giant star, Alnilam, the center star of the Orion's Belt constellation. Together, they travel to the core of a star very much like our sun, and Stella learns the detailed reactions behind fusion and how this energy source is being replicated here on Earth. I submitted my book to a fusion energy competition called the Fusion Energy Solutions Task Force, and honored as their winner, I've been given the opportunity to spread my book to global audiences, translate it into multiple languages, and even write a sequel. I would have never imagined all the unexpected doors that would have opened for me once I united my passion for STEM and creative writing. I can be both scientifically and creatively minded, and by allowing my different interests to intersect, I have followed an unexpected but rewarding path to help the world. And so can you. Fusion energy requires more than just scientists and engineers. It needs you, each one of your unique talents, interests, and beliefs. Fusion is a multi-dimensional challenge that requires collaboration between diverse fields. The industry needs policymakers to create laws, people working in finance, education and marketing professionals, and as I've seen firsthand, artists and writers are crucial to building the public support necessary to commercialize fusion. Whatever your unique interest is, it can intersect with the fields of fusion energy too. The stars have always inspired me to reach higher, go further. As we strive to bring the power of the stars down here on Earth, we must remember that the greatest achievements come from bold dreams and relentless perseverance. Fusion is the challenge of a lifetime, but the reward is a legacy that could transform civilization. So tonight, look up at the sky, but don't just see the stars, see the future that they inspire. Often, the brightest solutions are the ones we create when we dare to dream big enough to reach for them. Standing here before you today, I think back to my five-year-old self who had big dreams of becoming an astronaut. While I may not be floating amongst the stars, I'm part of a mission just as exciting, bringing their power down to Earth. And I invite you to join me. Together, we can ignite the spark that will inspire a greener future. Thank you.